realign the camera here. So today, I'm going to show you how to replace one of these. This is a bad daughter board. It exists on the power button side of this Chromebook. This is a Lenovo 300E first generation Chromebook. These buttons have a very small actuating distance and very low actuation force. They're micro switches. I shouldn't say that. They, they do have some force. Now there's a couple different versions I've noticed when we've been working on these of boards and a couple of revs of part numbers. They all fit and operate basically the same, so they are interconnectable for all the different 300Es, as far as I can tell. Now, there are two types of switches you're going to see in here. One is these two-tone switches, black and, and, and beige, and the other one is a solid beige color one. Now, the difference I've been able to find is on the bottom, there are little through holes, little vias. They're there just to anchor the switches in. And what happens is, is on these two-tone ones, the little too much pressure will cause them to jam. They'll jam in a position where they won't work or they'll jam where they're constantly activated and the Chromebook will turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. Um, it does sometimes happen to these volume buttons, though more primarily to the power button. The single color beige ones tend to have an issue where they lift and that's because those pegs that are support uh, support legs off these switches go through these vias are not as long and so they they respond to that pressure um, they're a little bit more rigid switch but they have a little bit less through hole support which means they tend to lift um, in either case they've got to be replaced so uh, what I'm going to go through today is replacing it. Now I've done one in this board already, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how to crack it open, where the board exists, things to watch out for in removing it. And then um, write to me if you have any suggestions, questions, comments, let me know. Um, what's contained on here is the audio chip, the power button board, uh, a few extra supporting pieces of hardware here. This is your connector for your internal speakers. This is the connector back to the motherboard. The other thing to note is there are two LEDs on either side of the power switch. That's gonna become important when we open this up. Now there are a couple, um, there, there is a piece of foam that surrounds both the power button and those LEDs. And the reason that is, is there's a light spot here. That's a light that lights up to let you know that the Chromebook is on. And without that foam, you get some light leaks around inside. So um, that's to prevent that, but it also sequesters some of that light. There are um, in that power button, lighter pieces of plastic that function as what are called light pipes. They basically sit almost right on those LEDs and funnel that light out so you get the most out of them with the smallest and lowest power LEDs you can. It's just more efficient that way. And part of the reason I'm making this is I haven't seen very many videos out there showing how to tear down these 300E first generation Chromebooks from Lenovo. And despite my best efforts when getting extra parts, um, I have not, as of yet, gotten documentation from Lenovo on how to do that. So you'll see I took all the bottom screws out of here. There are um, four, seven, ten screws on the bottom. I'm going to flip this over. And I'm going to use this guitar pick. And we're going to just go ahead and get in here. Um, and pop this open. Um, these boards are a little bit stiff, so they might pop back in and semi-latch, which is why you see me holding it up on the other side for right now. Uh, now that I've got that loose all the way around, these keyboards fit underneath the screen bezel. So we need to go ahead and 
shimmy that out a little bit. Now, a couple things you're going to take out here. You're going to take out your trackpad and your keyboard. You're going to disconnect those, set that aside, and we'll come back to that. The other thing you're going to want to do is to disconnect this power cable. You don't have to. It's just a good idea, as well as being grounded, which you can't see, but I have grounding underneath the table here. Once you've got that disconnected, you're going to lift this up, pull the ribbon cable out, pull this one out, and then, to be honest, that's part of the reason why you're not seeing me take the whole board out. These connectors here for the speakers are difficult to get out. They lock in there very tightly, and they tend not to want to come out very easily. Um, you can use the edge of your spudger and a finger or the edge of a couple of spudgers and just kind of wiggle it back so you get it out. You don't want to pull on this, these wires because they're relatively thin and you don't want to pull the pins out of the connector and have to spend time trying to reseat those. Pain in the butt. I've done it. There are four screws that hold it in and two alignment pegs. Now the one over here closest to this headphone jack, this one you sometimes have to finagle it a little bit because the headphone jack slides in and under right there. It can kind of stick you up a little bit. You might be thinking, well, what in the heck did I leave connected now? This piece right here, this black piece, I'll use this to, for a better contrast here. This is what I was talking about. There's a power button here. There's an LED on either side. It's kind of hard to make out, but there's two forks that come from that power button and they they are not right up against the LEDs, but fairly close. Um, oftentimes when you see LED, um, switch damage, especially if it's the single beige colored switch that lifts, you will get um, cracked LEDs along with it. This piece of foam, again, is just there to seal up, to keep light from leaking out around into cracks and crevices around the rocker for the volume up and volume down, up underneath the board in general just sequesters the light. Um, once you've taken it out, you pop it back in, reconnect these two wires here, plug your battery back in, and a lot of times you're gonna need a charger because when you, then this isn't unique to this model of Chromebook, but when you disconnect the power, they don't really wanna come back on even when you hold the power button until you've given them power from the outside. It's sort of like a jump to kickstart the system, charge everything up and charge those circuits up that are reading for this power button because that power button isn't like the old rocker switches on stuff where it's on and the juice is just going. There's actually a low level signal and it's waiting for that from here. So by applying that power, the external power, you're making sure there's enough for it to, to get up. And I think that's actually part of the startup routine on these is to verify that if they haven't ever been plugged in, they don't want to start up just to shut down and have something corrupt. So that's pretty much it. There isn't a whole lot inside one of these. You've got a left and right speaker. You've got your daughter board here. You have your motherboard here, which has all the power connectors built into it, HDMI, USB, SD card reader and thermal paste around the shielding, around the processor and some other units. There's your display connector. There are your two antennas, which run up along in here. And that's really all there is to it. Once you've replaced it, obviously you wanna make sure you, you plug it back in, plug your keyboard and trackpad in first, and then plug your battery in. The reason I do that is to make sure I don't accidentally trigger something while I'm hooking everything up. Once you've got those connected, make sure to test your power button, make sure to test your volume up down rocker. And you can also check your um, speaker if you want your um, headphone jack here. I find those don't tend to go out very often. And the few that we have come in where there have been issues like that, um, where there's been other damage where we haven't been able to warranty it, uh, which is few and far between, we have run into a couple of these boards where this audio chip doesn't work. If you have a reflow iron, set it to about 250 degrees C, reflow that for about a minute. You don't even have to bump it. You'll see flux come out from underneath it. And once you've done that, let it cool back down, put it back in there. I've had that fix 
Um, three out of four of them that I've had bad. So it's been a good fix so far. I don't have a lot of data on it, but it does work. When you reassemble this, um, I've already got the battery connected here, but you're gonna see that I'm gonna reconnect that after, typically after I've put these two in. And again, just to make sure I don't trigger anything. There are little ears, especially on this one to make sure it's in right. And when you place this back in, put it in at an angle. Remember, it's got to go up underneath this chassis here, this piece of chassis for the um, screen, or bezel, I should say, for the screen. Pop it back into place. Now, I've already tested this one, so I'm just going to screw it back together. But you want to make sure that your keyboard works, that your trackpad works, that your volume and your power buttons work before you screw this together. You don't have to, but you'll be cursing at yourself um, when you realize something doesn't work, something wasn't reconnected, now I've got to take it all apart, crud. Um, that's about it. We'll flip this back over. We'll put our screws back in, and if you've seen my other videos, when you, um, put something back together. What I like to do is to make sure that the screws are threaded and started so that I don't have um, me, so that I don't have uh, a misalignment somewhere and then have to take apart everything and try and fit it all back together. It's a horrible pain in the butt. like you can use a pattern when screwing these in. I haven't found that it makes too much of a difference for me personally, but you can always work your way around the seam, make sure everything clips into place. So it's really nice, but if you pressed everything together right in the beginning, you shouldn't have a problem. And there we go, one repaired Chromebook. Chromebook.